Good afternoon, everyone. This is your captain speaking. Welcome aboard your return flight back to planet Earth from Pluto. We hope you enjoyed your stay, but it is time to return to your former home. As you know, Pluto turned out to be a bit boring and not as advanced as we had hoped, so let's get you home safely. A few safety announcements before we do take off. Please do not smoke on board. Fire in space is very bad, and I want to make it home too. Secondly, please do remember that we are a no-podcast flight. We managed to ditch those cult trumpet guys, so uh, let's get back without any interruption, shall we? Wait. Wait. Who let, who let them back on? No. Oh, come on. Oh, for God's sake. Yes, we managed to sneak back on. Fantastic. If we keep our voices down a bit, no one will hear us, and, and I think we'll be safe. No one will suspect a thing. <laughs> it's very cramped, though, in these overhead lockers, it, Mark. It is a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Get yeah, your foot um, out of there, please, my friend. <laughs> that's not my foot. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, we're on the return journey. And we've started Series 2. And at the beginning of... Is it Series 2 or Season 2? Are I mean, we going it British depends or on where we are, really, doesn't it? I mean... I, I'll go with Season 2. That's what I'll call it. But, but that's cool. So, yes, the first episode of 2022. And the last one was all about kind of our top music choices. So this time we're going to go for movies on the way back. Uh, s- slightly different format in that we're going to go by genre. We've picked five genres... There's obviously more than five genres of movies around, but we've picked five main ones and then we'll maybe cover a couple of the other ones as, as we go along. So we've each picked one favourite film from each genre or one film that we would happily watch from now until the rest of time. Or, or until we uh, arrive at Earth, which everyone comes first. It depends whether we follow the right directions, if the sat-nav's playing up or not really, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, so we'll cover those. We'll have a few honourable mentions as well, because I don't know about you, but it was really tricky for me to narrow down to, to just one film per genre. Yeah. Um, there's, there's always ones that you think of. And then perhaps cover maybe franchises. So if, if you know, a series of films, if there's maybe not one that you can pick as an overall favourite, what what's maybe your favourite franchise as a whole? And then there's always the classic films, right? So you've got, you know, th- those films that, quote-unquote, films you've got to see before you die the films that everyone has to watch and i don't know about you but there's some of those where i have watched them and i just don't see what the fuss is about right so we'll we'll maybe cover those and also classic films again ones that are on those lists films that you feel like you should see (coughs) die hard um but (laughs) you just haven't got round to yet so th- maybe this is, that's the time just to kind of name and shame ourselves on on those movies that we just haven't got around to watching for one I think, reason. I think that's a very good format. And yeah. just to put it all out on the table, I've not written any of mine down. Okay. Um, I've written, I've got some notes for mine, but... I think mine's going to be a bit off the wall and maybe maybe then after, after hearing this back, I'll go, why would I choose that? Because... <laughs> That's fine. We can go off yeah, the wall. I've given we it can some go off thought. the wall. I've given and, it some and, thought. And, and and certainly in terms of you know the the honourable mention side of things, the ones that might not be quite at the top of the list, the, there's definitely some on on my list that that might might go with that. As with the music episode, we have not discussed in advance our choices. Nope. Um, so we don't know what's coming. But again, as with the music one, what I'll do. It is put together a a watch list um, where you can either buy or stream the, the films that we're talking about, depending on whether they're available physically or digitally. Uh, and I'll, I'll stick that in the episode description. And then you can, as you listen to this or afterwards, if there's any that you're interested in, you can grab them yourselves and uh, and take a look. So I think without further ado, shall we... Shall we soldier on? 
I think so. So now, it's probably good idea. Go for, well, I was go it's first? probably good to tell everyone the genres that we've limited. All right. So as I said, I, I kind of try to get it down to five, and and even one of those is a bit of a mishmash of three, because there's just so many when you actually think about it. So the first one is, is action, stroke, thriller, stroke, drama. Right. Which, you know, covers most non-fantasy kind of stuff, I guess. Um, but again, there's crossover films there, so there might be something unusual in there. Comedy, obviously, fairly self-explanatory there. Horror, uh, could just be out-and-out out horror, could be just creepy shit, could be sci-fi horror, kind of comedy horror, however you want to take it. Um, sci-fi, mm -hmm. again, could be a, a, a mix of genres, but again, fairly self-explanatory. As long as it's sort of science fiction in its core, then yeah. fair yeah. enough. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, fair exactly. enough. And animated. And, then, and animated, yeah. Okay. So, obviously with animated, that could be drama, comedy, horror, musical. Yeah. Whatever you fancy, really, in there. I think I want you to go first so I know where to set it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. This was a tricky one for me, because there's, there's a lot there's, there's a lot I could have chosen for this one. I am going to go with, for my kind of main one, is the Bond Supremacy. That's interesting. Okay. Um, I think the first Bond film, The Bond Identity, was brilliant in kind of setting up the world of, of Bond and, and the, the organisation, Treadstone and, and all that kind of thing, right? But I think when Paul Greengrass came in for the second film, it really set the standard, I think, for the rest of the series, which has its ups and downs, obviously, as it goes along. But it really set the standard for the series and for other kind of action thrillers. You know, it was obvious that the Bond franchise, you know, kind of kicked up a notch after after the Bond films came along. Um, so I just think it's a really fast moving tightly paced you know really well shot thriller with some great action sequences that's fair enough i think that's a a strong start um not a film i would have thought you say is you'd quite happily watch forever but this is this is the thing isn't it these could be like really comforting films and mm. you know some people's comforting films are the harry potter films yeah, you know. Yeah, um yeah. right, okay, fair enough, fair enough. All right, then we'll we'll move on to mine. This is yeah, incredibly hard because, you know, everything is probably got action sequences in it. True. Um from, you know, like I say Potter, Lord of the Rings, the Marvel films, uh the Star yeah. Wars movies, it's action. It's a pretty loose definition to be fair. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but I think for me and it's it's part of a franchise, but it for me it's the best one of the franchise. Mm. A movie that I have seen countless times over the years would mm. be Terminator Two: Judgment Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's balls to the wall, and if you've mm -hmm. not seen it, where the hell have you been for the last thirty years? But it's a proper pioneering movie in the sense for special effects, mm -hmm. and it. It, Terminator changed Arnold Schwarzenegger's career into something else other than bodybuilding. Yeah. yeah. But you know the story goes that he signed on to it to be the good guy. I think that was what Cameron originally wanted. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and they made Schwarzenegger's being a good guy, and it's 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 a good film. It's I think it's a good film to watch as well if you're younger. It's not mm. that bad, really, by today's standards of what's graphic and gnarly but it's, it's got its scenes but it's just a damn good action film it is i did think about a couple of cameron films myself um i having re-watched a couple of his films i, I i'm not convinced that they age very well uh, would you say the same about e2 possibly yeah the i don't know they're, they're very much it's a 90s film. It really feels like a 90s film, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic film, right? I, 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 you know, as as a sequel, it's one of the few sequels that, you know, are, are truly better than the original. 
and the scale of it, you know, the, that whole kind of highway chase at the end as they're heading towards the steel mill and with the helicopter flying under the bridge and all that kind of ch- stuff. It, it's spectacular, yes, absolutely, without a doubt. But I don't know if it's one that I would necessarily watch over, uh, and over that's, again. That's, that's, I guess that's where, it, I mean, you, you could have gone Aliens in that action, and that's a Cameron movie, but... That's one I do think has aged really badly. Yeah, I, I have. I haven't. I say yeah. I'm agreeing. I haven't seen it for a very long time, but I, I will make a point to watch it soon. Mm. Mm. Um, but I thought also about sneaking Alien into here as an action film, but that that might come up somewhere else. Um, okay. But for me, T2, it's an outright action film. I remember watching it as a as a young kid, too young to see it, and you know, legally if you like. Yeah. Because um, it's a 15, so I must have seen it when I was maybe like 11, 12. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just the action, the sequence of it sequences in it just blew me away as a kid mm. but yeah no no it's, that's a good that's a good call it is a it is a spectacular action film and, and a lot of this, a lot of it ho- does hold up very well in terms of the 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 kind of stunts and, and action and things like that and even the effects you know they're like pioneering some, some effects of them, some of them hand, still stand up pretty cool um, they do and I, I, I think they, they work best because they're used very sparingly yeah, agreed. Agreed. You know, when 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 you're look, when you're staring at a special effect for too long, it becomes obvious how it's done. Whereas they cut between makeup, CGI, puppets, yeah, very well. well okay, again, a lot of the creature stuff, if you like, was Stan Winston, who was obviously mm-hmm. incredible at what he did. Yeah, and well, the whole shop. I'm not just saying Stan Winston, but obviously it was his name to it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the Stan. If I saw the Stan Winston school was doing stuff for movies i thought yeah this is this is gonna go well oh absolutely yeah yeah it's a it's a real stamp of quality um that they're involved right let's move into comedy then comedy right anchorman really oh god yeah i'm gonna open the air duct bear with (laughs) i love that film I'm i'm a fan of will ferrell i'm a fan of paul rudd um I just I love how ridiculous it is, like the whole rivalry between the different news teams, and like the gang fight. That's funny, but that's you know? a sequence. That's not a film. But just the whole it's just the whole thing's just ridiculous. There's so many quotable lines in it, and it's just I just I just love it. The second one. Is not as good, right? It, it, but it's, it's, it has its moments. But the first Anchorman is just go back to your home on it's Whore just fantastic. Island. Just fantastic. Rubbish. <laughs> go on then. Your turn. This is another one that could be mixed into very different numbers of genre binding movies. Mm. But I'm probably going to keep mine for uh, for my for my franchise. I think for there. Okay. Annoyingly, I think I'm sticking down the Will Ferrell route, and I, I hate that because I hate Will Ferrell. <laughs> oh wow! Well. But oh, I can't stand the man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, he shouts and screams like a child, and that's apparently entertaining. <laughs> but I'm going back to you know, it's, it's for me. This is a film that I wish I could see again without having any former memory of it. You know. Okay. Um. Because I remember watching it and it, I just I just found it so stupidly funny. I don't know, you might not agree with me on this. But okay. Step Brothers. Okay, yeah. I remember watching that for the first time and it was around the same time as The Hangover, I think. Yeah. And, and The Hangover was a fantastic film. Funny and it was fresh and a lot of the gags hadn't been done before. Yeah. But Step Brothers, I don't know what it was. It was just bloody hilarious to me. Okay. And I, I find it quite a comforting film, you know, a bit hungover. I'll stick this is light hearted now. Well, that's interesting because it's Will Ferrell. Yeah. And 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 it's, it's Adam, Adam, Adam McKay, McKay again. Yeah. Who also directed Anchorman. Exactly, and that's but it's not as absurd so as wrong Anchorman. With you? Well, what is, what's your problem? Anchorman was just absurd. Yes. <laughs> I didn't like it. Wasn't it brilliant? No. What well, and and Step Brothers is a is a hard edged documentary look. Well, it's less absurd than Anchorman is. <laughs> okay, now I'll give you Step Brothers. It, it is a funny film. Again, 
Will Ferrell and John C. Riley as well. Who's just he's brilliant. So it's, it's the fucking Catalina wine mixer. <laughs> And the, the whole, did you teabag my drum set? I mean, uh, it's still so good. But I was having this conversation with somebody recently. I can't remember the last time I watched a a film that was quote-unquote comedy. Mm. I like proper belly laughed. Yeah. There's been a, um, I don't know if we, we'll cover it, but things like TV shows that we'd be stuck with forever. I watched, I watched one recently, which was there for me. Like, it's probably mm. one of the best things I've ever seen on telly. Mm. And... But in terms of comedy film, like I watched Don't Look Up recently. Um, loved it. Great, loved it. great, great uh, Netflix reception in Pluto. It same was really good. Again, same director. Very good. And people mm. who were saying, "Oh, I didn't get it." Well, you, have a brain cell, mate. It's mm. pretty obvious what they're doing, and that's the funny thing. Mm. Worth a watch. But yeah, for me, comedy Step Brothers there for me. Okay. All right. No, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, so next one, horror. Ah, uh, this is going to be a hard one. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll go first, right? Uh, Hellraiser. Oh, that's not a happy film. No, but I'll tell you what it is. is It's the first film that really got me into horror, right? So I grew up in the 80s. Um, the video nasty scare. That's a, for a whole other episode. But the video nasty shit was going on. And, you know, all these horror films have been banned and, and, and all this kind of thing. But the ones that weren't, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, the various Friday the 13th films, they just didn't appeal to me, right? They just looked stupid. <laughs> um, li- literally what, that. And, and demonic Cenobites didn't. I'll get to that. So, <laughs> so But they look stupid in, in the sense of, like, stupid characters... Uh, inventive special effects, that's cool, but then like stupid puns and gags afterwards and all this kind of shit. It just didn't appeal to me at all, right? But the God bless him, our local independent video library, I went in there when I was far too young to be watching these kind of films and said, have you got any horror films that are like proper horror films? Like, How, how old would you have been at this point? Like, maybe, I, w- I want to go like early teens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go. Let's have a look. Hellraiser came out in '87, so let's say it was on video '88, '89. So 14. Yeah, 13, yeah too, 14. too young to really. Be, that was a hard 18 as well at the time. Yeah, it was very hard. It still is really. Um, and I just said, "What have you got that's actually properly a horror film, a scary film? Not even, not even scary film, it's a bit of serious horror film, right?" And he he basically went, "Try this." <laughs> so I. <laughs> I took it, I took it, watched it. Uh, it must have been, it must have been eighty nine, because I took it back the next day and got Hellraiser two out straight away. Ah, uh, right. So you you could have gone for the sequel straight away. I see. I see. So so release wise, I think Hellraiser two came out in nineteen eighty eight. So it must have been on video in nineteen eighty nine. But either way, those two. But that was like, oh, this is a proper horror film, right? In terms of obviously the gore element, which you know is kind of uh, uh, usually a given in for most horror films, but just the fact it was like it was a serious horror film. There were no pinhead it campy, it, no campiness. Yeah, pinhead didn't appear and start cracking jokes. You know, uh, the kind of horror element looked gooey and uncomfortable, and, yeah. and that kind of thing. Obviously, visually, the design. Of, of everything was spectacular, like the Cenobites and Frank, the like the skinless yep. makeup yep. and everything. And it was and it was British, you know. Uh tried to be American with some really bad dubbing on some characters, but it was clearly <laughs> a British film. Um and it was just like, no, this is what this is a proper horror film, you know? And and that's what really actually then got me into horror films because I realised that they weren't all just kind of Teen, campy, yeah. Te- teens in the woods having sex and getting murdered. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a place for that, right? I've since, you know, rewatched all of those, like Nightmare on Elm Streets and uh, Friday the Thirteenth and stuff like that. Sure. And they are what they are, and there's a place for those films. But Hellraiser was the first one where I went. This is a proper horror film. This is what I mean when I think of a horror film. I like that. I think that's a really solid choice. Mm. Um. For me, uh, growing up, 
I, I didn't like horror films. Um, right. Okay, I grew up 10 years after Marx of the 90s. Horror for me, oh, I don't know, Goosebumps was on the telly, you know, and <laughs> that was that was scary to a kid. Mm. And uh, a lot of my friends uh, who I bothered with had older brothers, so right. I got subjected to some horror films on the sly. Uh, yeah. Final Destination 2 being a memorable one. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Lady's Head coming off in a lift, that stayed with me for a very long time. Yep. Um, so much so that my, my mate's brother who was a year or so older than me, uh, had nightmares from 13 ghosts. Oh, right. And that okay. still comes up today in conversation, that time that my friend showed his younger brother 13 ghosts and had nightmares for two <laughs> weeks. And uh, he's not he doesn't forget that. But for me, I think it was only when I sort of came into sort of uh, kidlehood, I guess, so tweeny mm. ages, you know, 11, 12, 13, where I sort of went, oh, yeah, I, I quite like this genre. I don't like yeah. boo scares. So okay. any anything like Paranormal Activity is straight out. Absolutely out. I think it's cheap. Some of it can be clever. Yeah, yeah. But something going bang and a door opening and a character in your, in the screen, I think that's mm-hmm. cheap, cheap scares. Okay, no, that's fair. That's fair. I like a slasher. This was a really hard one for me to narrow down. I like the campiness. I'm a massive Friday the 13th and massive Nightmare on Elm Street fan. But I think the one horror film that is a horror film, and I will fight, I'll choose the hill to die on, that it's a horror film and not sci-fi, Alien. Okay. I will sit with Alien forever because Uh it still scares the shit out of me. Okay. The fact that you can watch it a hundred times and still not quite work out where it is hiding in plain sight. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Maybe another one here... I, I would have chosen his cabin in the woods. That was where I was thinking as well, because it's a fun film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cabin in the woods, I like because it kind of again, it's one of those ones kind of deconstructs the genre. It's really self-aware as well. Of, yeah, it's a horror film, but it's a comedy. It's an action yeah. film, and, and as as well as being a great kind of horror movie in and of itself. Yeah. It does that thing of of taking it apart and, and all that. But, but but for a film that's gonna you know a horror film for me is about dread and tension. Yep. yep. And there are plenty of films that build and build and build and build with little release. And you yep. know, Hereditary is a very good film, and that Midsummer does the same. You know, Ari Aster is yeah. really honing in on that. Oh yeah, yeah. But what the one of the you know, it's all about classic films you be stuck with forever and. Alien for me was that first film where that music just builds and builds and it drops off and then it's quiet and you just you sit with your own thoughts and you're staring at that screen going mm. the alien blends in and I know it's here I know it is but I can't see it. and the scene where yeah. they're in the um, one of the ducts and you know he's got his flashlight he looks one way it's not there he looks the yeah. other way it's not there he goes back and it's just there yes ah oh, every time every time <laughs> that just makes my skin crawl I went to see when Alien Three came out. The Odeon near me did did like a, a, a three movie marathon. Nice one day, uh, and it was packed out. But obviously there were people who hadn't seen the films before, right? And they'd maybe been dragged along by their other halves and so on. And that scene in the ducts, there yeah. was absolute silence in the cinema, right? But when he, as you say, when he turns back and the creatures behind him, this scream from this one poor girl rang out oh dear in the hu- above all the noise on the screen all the music and the tension and the mm-hmm. sound effects this scream <laughs> filled the cinema <laughs> and there was like a couple of seconds silence and then everyone just pissed themselves laughing that's brilliant <laughs> but it's like you're right it is that it's I, I would class it, I'd say, 50-50 between sci-fi and horror, but you're right. The horror elements of the building of the tension, the, the yeah. dread, the not knowing when it's going to appear next, the thing of, you know, that it has those, as Giga, the designer, put it, the biomechanical, right? So it has those mechanical elements to its look where is that a pipe or is it its head? Is that a is yeah. that a shadow there? And it's that thing of like, did I see it? 
or did I just see a load of cables hanging? And I, and and I still get that now watching it. Mm. It's brilliant, mm. absolutely brilliant. That, that's going to be mine. No, that's a good shout, actually. That's that's a really good shout. Um, sci-fi. Sci- sci-fi. And again, it's one of those genres where it can be a real mix of... It can include so many other kind of bits. I, I'm going to go with this one. And, do you know, I think, I think only because it's so recent, and I've watched it two or three times now, and I'm kind of... I'm enjoying it more and more. I, I loved it the first time I watched it, but I'm kind of getting more and more into it. And that's June, the, 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 new, the new one. The new one. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, I've got lots and lots of honourable mentions here, don't get me wrong. But I just think it's one that I've, I've kind of watched already two or three times. And it, one of the things that science fiction should do is build a world that you completely believe in. Yeah, to, to make right. it palatable, because it's something that we can't comprehend, right? Precisely, because it's, it's taking you into the future, or into another planet, or into an alternate version of the present day, or, or even the past, right? But it's got to build this world visually in a very quick way, so that you get it without having to be told it, right? And there's very few films that do that. Denny Villeneuve has been compared to Ridley Scott, rightly so, because that's one thing that Ridley Scott can do. Like, talk about Alien, right? With very little dialogue or explanation, you know where you are with Alien, right? You get it. You get the environment. You get the kind of characters that they are. They're truck drivers in space, right? Sure. They're not astronauts. They're not spacemen. They're truck drivers in space hauling a cargo. Blade Runner. Obviously, there's an opening crawl at the beginning, setting the scene in terms of what replicants are, etc. But when that opening shot across the city, and there's all flames and cars flying and all that, you get where you are. You are in that world, and you go, right, here I am. It's polluted, smoky. There's buildings that are hundreds of stories tall. There's flying cars. It's rain, and it's dark. Here we are in the world of Blade Runner. And I think June does that equally as well. You you just understand where you are with it. Okay. Without that's to me anyway, without without any kind of it doesn't have to be explained anymore. The yeah. rest you pick up as you go along. That's interesting because I'm I'm yet to see it. And Okay. Um, okay. I'm looking forward to it. But again mm. the the director I I watched Arrival and I didn't get it. I didn't understand the hype, so I'm going into one of his films a bit apprehensive, you know? Have you seen Blade Runner 2049? Uh, yeah, I kind of enjoyed that one. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not a big Blade Runner fan, to be fair. Oh, fair enough, um, fair enough. But I liked a modern version of Blade Runner. Mm. Mainly because mm. the original's got so many bloody cuts, I don't know which one I should be watching. <laughs> um, the final cut. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that's a good choice, mate, and I'm glad that it, you know, it's a modern one as well. I think that's cool. Yeah, I think... I think- it, it, had it not been that one, I would have probably gone uh, for Robocop. Ah, uh, very good film. Um, still good. Still good. Still fantastic. Holds up brilliantly. That is a film that doesn't feel like it's aged. Uh, un- other than, you know, they've got old style TVs instead of flat screen. Yeah, and the great scene at the end with the flailing arms. It, it's best part of the charm. That's always luxury. <laughs> no one saw that in 1987 and thought, cutting edge, the special <laughs> effects there. Um, but yeah, Fair uh, play. it would have been Fair it would have been Robocop, but 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 June just because it's so kind of fresh. Okay, that's fair enough. I like that. Sci-fi, right? Well, there's lots you can choose, as you've just you know sort of explained. But I don't know. I I, I should have prepared it, but I didn't. And <laughs> Instead of it being an honourable mention, which I was going to leave it for, I think I think I should put it in as, as yeah, this is this is the one that I would quite happily be stuck with forever. And even if I had to watch, choose one film to watch on repeat, you know, Clockwork Orange style. Mm-hmm. Back to the Future. Okay, yeah. It's it's adventure comedy sci-fi, mm. but you know the be all and end all. It's time travel. And yeah. how can you get more science fiction than that? Absolutely. It's like pure science fiction. And again, 
being raised in the 90s, it was one of the first sort of movies that I watched that I, f- I just fell in love with it and the tape probably wore out. Mm. But I've bought it so many times over the years. I'm a massive fan of the franchise. And there's just something about it that's... I still, I still, I watch it still and I feel like a kid. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those things that, one of those films that I would still like to watch again without any memory of and just fall in love with it all over again. Yeah. I think it's a really good Sunday afternoon sit down film. You don't yeah. have to really take any attention to it anymore, but you can stick it on and just, again, fall in love with it. The music's great. I'll go with that, yeah. The yeah. Uh, chemistry between. Michael and Christopher is just still so good. It's creepy as hell why he's in, he's friends with the Doctor, but that's okay. We get past that because it is explained in the comics. Yes, but yeah, it's just a nice, nice film. Okay, no, I, I get that. I'll, I'll probably we may return to that one a bit later on. Okay, I, I'm looking forward uh, to that. But, but, but yeah, let's move on from that then. That's my sci-fi. Get lost, okay. Star Wars. Let's not go into that. We don't want to upset too many people. Because I, <laughs> I, I could have a lot to say about oh, that. My favourite sci-fi was the Ghostbusters <laughs> in 2015. <laughs> um, okay, animated. So uh, this is a hard one, one too. It is, isn't it? Because again, it, it, it can encompass so many different ones. And, and in case it depends what you're in the mood for, right? Oh, sure. Um, I would go with, on this one, I think The Nightmare Before Christmas. Ah, Tim Burton. Mm. Well, he was the writer and producer. It was Henry Selick who directed it. But it's Tim Uh, Burton. It is often referred to as Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. I just, I just love it. I just love it. I think as, as like, as good as CG is, and I've absolutely nothing against CG animation at all. Right, some of the best, you know, Pixar of just phenomenal, you know, track record. But there's nothing like seeing a, a, a film that has literally been handcrafted, you know. Where yeah, it's... I'm a big fan of of that. Yeah. Mm. Although um, I did turn off Nightmare Before Christmas about ten, fifteen minutes in. Okay. I couldn't get on with it. Okay. okay. I, don't, I don't know why. There's just That's something fun, about yeah. it that I couldn't engage with. Hmm. But hey. Whatever turns you on. I, I I just I like the songs. I, I as I say, I I love the kind of handcrafted. Of obviously it's handcrafted, yeah, because it's models and stop motion, and obviously, you know, companies like uh, Ardman and Leica are kind of carrying on that. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, with with their stop motion movies. But that's like, the, and obviously it wasn't the first stop motion film, right? You know, but I think if you want to, if someone goes right, show me the stop motion animation film to kind of what's the best example, I think it would be that. That's good. I I think that's a good, a good, uh, uh, good point to make because you know I think of Ardman when I think of stop motion. Mm-hmm. Again, British studio. Uh, yeah, was yeah. was local to me at one point, and yeah. but the, it's a different scale, isn't it? Disney, <laughs> and that yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Um, I was what I thought you were going to go down an anime route. To be quite honest with you, I had you down as a Studio Ghibli guy. Oh no, no, I've never seen one either. No, no, I've, I've, I don't want to upset anyone. Oh, what have I done? I, I know they are, they are beloved by. So many people, cults, by so many people, but I just, I just don't get on with them. I've watched a few, and they are fine, <laughs> right? Spirited Away, My Neighbor Totoro, a couple of others, and I, 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 I think that I appreciate them more than I enjoy them. That's fair. You know, Akira. I love Akira. I, you know that as, as an anime. That absolutely, I'd, I'd watch that one. Um, but but Studio Ghibli, particularly, no, not really my thing. That's fair. That's fair. I I, I applaud your choice there. Not for me. I couldn't get on with it. One day I might mm. finish it. A bit like like Pulp Fiction. It took me about four or five attempts to actually get through the damn thing. Okay. But um, 
Pulp Fiction is probably an honourable mention for action. Pretty good. Mm. Mm. It's just too many films to choose from, isn't it? There when are. That's when you're a problem. fan of films. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. I think the honourable mentions is going to be longer than, uh, <laughs> than the main bit. Go on then, what's your animated film? Well, again, sort of, to give it a bit of a prelude, it's... Yeah, I'm a Disney kid. You know, those mm. were the animated movies I watched growing up. Even the classics, you know, some of the mm. classics are still pretty bloody good and they've been restored and they just look ph- phenomenal. Yeah. But we all know the reason why they're doing that and that's because Disney don't want to lose the rights to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Pixar, I always look forward to Pixar and over the last yeah. few years I feel they've dipped quite a bit. Mm. So I think peak di- Pixar was the early 2000s and I remember going to the cinema with family and seeing these films and again the colours just pop in and they they mm-hmm. still look good, right? Mm-hmm. So I think one that I, I it's got a few grown up jokes in it, really strong cast and I still watch it now and chuckle like a kid. It's probably Monsters Inc. Oh yeah. I just think it's such a fun fun film. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And again, a nice story. Um, and I'm a big John Goodman fan and of course. Yeah. The other man, what's his name? Billy Crystal. <laughs> Billy Crystal, thank you. I was going to say Martin Short. I love Short. Billy Crystal so much. <laughs> it's just such a, two iconic voices. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, it's just fun. Just fun. And obviously Steve Buscemi is the villain, and it's great. Yeah. I think with 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 Pixar, you kind of, you really are spoiled for choice, aren't you? With it? Oh, you're 26 but, films, I think, something now? Something like that, yeah. Even the ones that aren't great, like the let's say Cars, right? I think it's universally agreed that the Cars films are not their finest work, right? Fair enough. But even within those films, there are things that are really good. You know, like the the design of of like the you know the the whole concept of this world oh, with just, just cars, sneaking you know? car shaped things into yeah. the world eh? it's phenomenal all that so even in the films that aren't great films that aren't the best films there's always funny gags there's visual stuff that is just really inventive there's always something to like even in the stuff that's not the best stuff oh know? yeah i mean you know, look looking here so yeah there's 20 24 released pixar films now so that the lo- most latest was luca which i thoroughly enjoyed i thought the mm-hmm. world the world building of that was phenomenal i forgot that it was animated at times unless there was animated characters on screen yeah but, you know pixar has a really good way of making grown people cry yes and you know i'm going th- i've got the list up here um, obviously, the whole thing started with Toy Story, which has aged incredibly well. Yeah, and God, yeah. Monsters, Inc. is number four. But, you know, come forward a few years, you've got Ratatouille. And it's not my favourite, but it's fun. Yeah. But move to number ten. So this is, where are we now? Uh, 2009. Mm. Up. I would quite happily make a bet with... Is that only their tenth one? I know. I would make a oh, bet yeah. with any grown adult who didn't cry in that first ten minutes. Yeah. I will say, I bet you didn't cry. And if they did, fair enough. If they didn't, I'd happily give them a pound. Yeah. Because, or a dollar, or a yen, wherever you're listening from. Yeah, Because yeah. I remember us, we, were, we were on a family holiday, and uh, my dad watched it. And I remember him saying, I'm going to watch up. And I was like, oh, I've not seen it. And, you know, 10 minutes after watching, you look over and he's sniffling. He's like, you're right. You're like, mm. It's a really sad opening. <laughs> and this is a bloke in his 40s. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. You know, hard as nails and watching an animated film blubbing on a plane. But yeah, Pixar have a really good way of making these complex characters and complex stories you give a crap about. Yeah, it's animated and has, has some really good storytelling and really good points to their films. Yeah. Some shove down your throat, don't appreciate it. But, uh, you know, again, looking through the list here, one that everyone bangs on about is one of their favourite films is Inside Out yeah oh I hated it oh oh wow uh, <laughs> like as strongly as that is you know, Bing Bong died I clapped <laughs> you heartless bastard <laughs> <laughs> Bing Bong bit fuck off get on your trike and fuck off back to Neverland but I digress okay. that's too much for this uh, yeah Monsters Inc go back to the original point yep <laughs> calm down calm down Monsters Inc. No, that's a good call. And I think, yeah, I think with Pixar, you, you are kind of spoiled for choice. But, but Monsters Inc., you're right, one of the early ones. And it was still one of those ones where they were really on a, on a roll. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. They had the right cast, 
great a great look, a great design. And a lot of those early films were really kind of pinning down, you know, the technology as well. You know, the sort of like the fur. Animation oh yeah, the fact that you know, like that, you know. Uh, Sully John Goodman's character, the the detail of when he moves, and I think more specifically when he goes to the the snowy landscape. Mm. You know, the snow building up on his fur is yes. Yeah, for two thousand and one, and don't forget, you know, Pixar films take a long time to develop. Well, they did back oh, then anyway. Yeah, yeah. And to animate, so yeah. That feat back then, you know, 20 years ago, it, oh, I dread to think the kit that they were using to animate back then. Yeah. Oh, no. No, it must have. I mean, I don't necessarily know that they've got any quicker because the animation's got more detailed. True, so but I don't think it'll put... take, you know, five or six. I mean, I'm making this up now, but with the way the graphics have come on in terms of rendering, Yeah. I doubt it takes a week to render a scene anymore. No, that's probably I don't know. true. That's probably true. Yeah. But, but I, I uh, see what you mean. I see what you mean. But no, I think it's... Uh, no, that was a good call. That, that was a really good call. So, I, I guess those are our main choices. What Are there any honourable mentions you want to kind of fit in across any of those? I, I don't know. I, I'm i pretty... There are a few, you know, a handful of films that I'd quite happily sit with forever, but I'm not a... I don't think there's any movies that I'm a massive diehard, you know, this is the best film ever made kind of mm. kind of deal. I mean, big fan of Marvel. I'd quite happily sit and watch any number of them. But most recently, if you haven't seen No Way Home yet, oh my God, it's the perfect Marvel film. Mm. I would, mm. And I've only seen it the once, but I know I would quite happily watch that over and over again. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Other sort of like silly, just, you know, daft to think about it films, Ghostbusters, the original, it's still brilliant. Mm. Oh, it does. I, I watched it again just last week, you know. Nice. And it it holds up so well, it really does. Yeah. And Ghostbusters Two is a far better film than it's given credit for. I like Number Two. I don't care what people say. I think yeah. it's fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed watching Ghostbusters Two again. Was it on telly I, over Christmas, perchance? No, no. I just I I, I recently picked up the four K discs. Oh, okay. Uh, and I just not got around to watching them. Ah. So I just thought I'd, I'd, I thought I'd put the first one on just. You know when you do, you, I'll just watch it for ten minutes, just see what the transfer's like. You know, and then two of, hours later, two hours later, that was great. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I watched Ghostbusters two the next day, basically. Um, oh, nice. And and yeah, they both work really well. They hold up. And I haven't seen Afterlife yet, but have you I, not? I, I thought you had. No, no, I'm not going around Ooh, to see it I won't yet. Say anything, um, then. Okay, okay. But it's out on disc soon, so I've got the disc ordered, and I'm looking forward to. To kind of seeing that as a, I'm I'm aware of some of the stuff that happens in it. Sure. Know? Um. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that kind of wraps things up. You know. In terms of like other sort of honorable mentions, I I'm, I'm a Tarantino. I wouldn't call myself a big Tarantino film, but Pulp Fiction. Now I've got through mm. it. I think it's brilliant. Really, really mm. like that. Um, mm-hmm. The Green Mile was always a film that I thoroughly enjoyed, and it mm. still brings a tear to an eye towards the end. Mm-hmm. Um. And Jaws, maybe, is my other honourable mention. Oh, yeah, Jaws is a good one. I, I, I've got a few in terms of drama stuff. I, I think I'd go with Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Okay. The 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 Gary Oldman one. I I think probably just due to the when I grew up, I have got such a boner for Cold War uh, stuff. That was a quite a strong um, <laughs> expression for, yeah. for, for, for like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. I'm stick, and I stand by it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I just so, really so love that, the Gary Oldman version is the remake, isn't it? Well, it, it's another adaptation. There was Fair there enough. was a a TV version which was I think six or seven episodes with Alec Guinness, which is fantastic, and that Hello was done there. in the, uh, the that was done in the early eighties, right? Uh, and then this is like another adaptation, and it just I mean the 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 TV version. It, kind of covers everything in the book right and it does it over as i say six or seven hours and it does it fantastically and and when i first kind of heard they were doing the film i thought how on earth can they fit everything into like a two hour yeah film? sure but the, the how they st- kind of restructure it let's say to give you everything you need but nothing you don't need yeah into that is just masterful i think the screenplay won an oscar i believe uh, or a, a BAFTA, maybe both, but it rightfully, 
you know, was an award-winning screenplay and the work they did to kind of condense it down was fantastic and the cast are brilliant and the the whole the, the production design and the mood and the atmosphere is just fantastic. Okay, that's good. A um, couple of Tarantino films in there, Reservoir Dogs and Hateful Eight. Oh, okay, fair enough. Um, both love those. What about any more comedies? Any more comedies you'd go with? Oh, I don't know. Um, I guess this. I, I don't think there's been very many good comedy films made in the last years, to be fair. Um, mm. You could throw Ghostbusters in there as a comedy film. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, God, I don't know. I, I, you know, I think you might be right, though. You know, I, th- I think if you're looking at the best comedies, I, I think some of the best comedies that came along were, were in the 80s and 90s. Uh, yeah, probably. You, you know, stuff like Airplane. Well, airplane, Nick, was, yeah, Planes, Trains, Automobiles, that sort of... Yeah. The Lampoon Nick, films. Yeah, Naked Gun, Ferris Bueller. Yeah. You know... Um, I think there's been better comedy television recently. Yes, um, I think you're right. I think and, you're right. I think comedy's moved to TV, I think, definitely. And that was going to be a, a, a TV show that... I've, I, I've talked to Mark about this, not on podcast, Um over Christmas, we watched all of Ted Lasso, and mm-hmm. it is one of the nicest television shows you can watch. And it's not, it's not family friendly per se. There's lots no. of swearing in it, but it's a nice fil- a nice show. It builds a world, yep. and you care about the characters, and every character has an arc of some description, mm. and it makes you want to be a better person. Yeah, and that wouldn't work as a film. No, of course because, not. Because the the character progression needs the time. But know. it's awesome. Yeah, it really is. It really is. I, I think for horrors, I would also go with um, the remake of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I'm a big fan of that one. The 2003 remake? Yes. Um, the original, as much as it's classed as a classic, and I appreciate its status irritates the fuck out of me. Is it the last 20 minutes, perchance? Oh, just the whole thing. Oh, okay. I just find it... It just really rubs me up the wrong way. It really does. <laughs> but... but and, and again, you know, I think this might be something to do with, again, kind of when I grew up, this whole video nasty thing, that the one the one film where the name was going around the playground was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? Right. And, and, and all these kids talking about it, having never actually watched it, all you've got is the name, right? And you build it up in your mind as this ultimate horror, horror. thing. Yeah. And then when I finally actually watched it, it was before it was officially released here, I got, uh, I borrowed a friend's American laser disc, right? <laughs> it, it was still unreleased in this country. I'd still been refused a certificate, right? Uh, so I watched it in like the early 90s and I just literally thought, is that it? Yeah, yeah, I you know, know what you mean. And I felt so kind of let down by it, I guess. Yeah. The whereas hype. the whereas the remake, I mean, it's like full on intense from the from the fucking get go. You know, what I, I mean? like it, and I quite like because they did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and then they did yeah. the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. That's right. And I quite like that as well as a prequel. That's not bad. Yeah. Again, it's got its gore. And yeah. I like, but, yeah, no, I, again, I just want to say, I like that. It's a, it's a good remake for the modern generation. And I think it improves, it kind of takes the premise and the promise of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It changes right? the family element of it, though, quite it, a bit, doesn't it? It does, yeah. But I, it just, it's just, the, the look of it's incredible. It looks spectacular. Because that's what's coming out now, isn't there? There's, uh, sorry, I say what's coming out now. There is a Texas Chainsaw stated for this year. There is a Netflix one. That's it. And there was one. There was another one that came out um, a couple of years ago. Oh, was it just called Texas Chainsaw? I it think it was. It was. And that the, the, is a sequel to the original, which I didn't know going into that's it. That's right. And that's, that's when right. it threw me when it was following that family. Yeah. I didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's been all over the place. It has. But I think the new one is produced by Fede Alvarez, who did. The Evil Dead remake, which is brilliant, and he also did Don't Breathe as well. I know the one. So he's he's he knows what he's doing. Um, 
So, but yes, yeah, that that that, that Texas Chainsaw remake I think is just spectacular. Uh, and f- I've already mentioned like RoboCop for sci-fi. I think Total Recall as well is a great sci-fi movie. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then animation, I would go with not a Pixar one actually. A Big Hero Six. Ah, uh, nice film. So it's Disney rather than Pixar. Yeah, it's good. But I just a great film, funny. Again, visually really interesting. The the stuff with Baymax, like the slapstick kind of stuff with Baymax. Reach up and... through the window. <laughs> Learning how to fist bump and, and all that. When he's drunk, but he's deflated. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. It's very good. Just just great. Good good fun. My horror, um, Exorcist. Again, yeah. that was one oh, yeah. that was when I was growing up was uh, oh scary film, scary film. And you watch it, and yeah, it's got its moments, but I can see why it was banned, because of the whole religious aspect of it. Mm. Um, I, I'm not a religious person, so it doesn't offend me, but I get it. <laughs> well, well, oh, because dear. I... Be, what? What have I done? No, no, no. Because I grew up during this whole thing, one of the things that really has always interested me has been film censorship, Right. Right. So I've always had a real deep dive into that area. Sure. So with the Exorcist, the quote unquote banning, it was never it was never banned. What <laughs> happened was it was refused a certificate for home video. Oh, so it was released in theatres limitedly. Yeah. Well, well then... what originally happened was oh, originally Jesus, what have we done? <laughs> just just briefly, just briefly. Originally, films to be released in the cinema in the UK had to have a certificate from the BBFC, right? Yep. On video, they didn't. Right. So, so when the when the when the VHS and Betamax home video market first took off, companies were releasing films. They didn't have to be certified, and so they would release in like, as you can you can imagine the kind of movies they were releasing. Right. They'd pick up cheap Euro horror trash, whatever, and flood the market as alongside studio movies like The Exorcist and, and other stuff. Right. The Video Recordings Act came in in 1984 that required all home video releases to also be certified by the BBFC. So any films that had been released before then had to be submitted to the BBFC for certification. They would either be released fine, no problem. The films would be cut if needed to get their certificate or they would be refused a certificate. Now, The Exorcist is an interesting one because... It was refused a certificate for for home viewing, but the, but the head of the BBFC at the time, James Furman, he was a bit of a knobhead, and he'd come out with this shit. And one of the things he came out with about The Exorcist was, it is a film needs to be seen uncut. It should not be cut. It's a fantastic film, and it deserves to be seen uncut. However, it can't be released on video uncut. Right? Right. So he's left in this position where... It shouldn't be cut, but if it's going to get released on video, it has to be cut. Yeah. Therefore, refuse a certificate. Right. Right? Stupid. Stupid nannying fucking bullshit. Well, mine's The Exorcist. I'm choosing (laughs) The Exorcist here. (laughs) Just saying it's never been banned. All right, all right. Get get off your soapbox. I'll cut that out. I'll cut that out. No, I think everyone should go through the horror that I've just had to go through. I, I muted my computer, to be fair. Just chimed back in when I thought was appropriate. Go for it. Uh, other horrors. I don't now, know. on the other hand... <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's history with Mark. <laughs> yeah, horror's big. The original Saw. Yeah. Pre- pretty decent. Still pretty yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Um, I'm a big Final Destination, Final Destination fan. I um, think they're great. I really yeah, do. Yeah, it's 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 uh, ingenuity of how they're gonna kill off some poor bugger. Yeah, I I think going back to what we were saying earlier on about horror, about serious horror and campy horror, I think they they're the best example of campy horror where they like they go full in. They know how ridiculous and funny they are. And they just go for it. But that's why we kept going back to see them, didn't it? It was yeah, how, how yeah. are they going to do it this time? Again, with saw, it's body that's horror, it. it's grim. But it's like, how the hell can they kill people again? Yeah, yeah. It's, but uh, f- probably not the franchise, but Final Station Two, I'll throw in there as probably the best. Mm. And that's the one that had the had the scare with 
as a mm. kid. Um, mm. But just the, the barbed wire scene. Oh, it's still so good. Oh, no, it's the it's so fucking... Good. No, it's the motorway scene at the beginning, surely. Oh, and I bet you, anybody who has seen that film still doesn't drive behind a truck of logs. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> no, absolutely. I think that <laughs> that scene... I think that's a highlight of the series. Yeah. But I think it's it's like... It's one of those scenes that just gets into the kind of oh, cultural it, subconscious. It, it proper has messed know? with so many minds and imprinted, yeah. you don't drive behind them. Well, why? Because I've seen someone's head come off. Yeah. It's really irrational. Have, have you not seen Final Destination? It's Can like, you move into the other lane, please? There's a few things you never do. Stand close to a train at level crossing in case metal decapitates you. You never yeah. drive behind a, a truck for cooling logs. You never get into an, a sunbed. <laughs> I'm trying to think from the other the other movies. Oh, well, never... there's the roller coaster one as well. Ah, no, that, that's fine. Yeah, they're safe. They are. They are. No, that's that's a good choice. The final destination. I'll go with that. Are there any musicals or war movies I'm or kind of anything else that, that would fit? I'm not a fan of war films. My, I've members of my family are really into their history and I, I, mm. I think I've just been bored by it over the years being told okay. how things happen. I did like it in school. Obviously, Saving Private Ryan's a really good historical film. Mm-hmm. Um, Titanic, real life event, really good. Yeah, yeah. Eh, not really my thing. War. Um, okay. Musicals, though, that's my jam. Oh, right, okay. I, I quite like a musical. High school um, musical? No, maybe not that. Not that. <laughs> I recently watched Tick, Tick, Boom. Oh, right. having okay. knowing having known nothing about Jonathan Larson, yeah, having never heard Rent before, right, and I thought it was absolutely amazing. Oh wow, okay, okay. really worth a watch. If you're an Andrew Garfield fan, it, it's awesome. Yeah, and the music's pretty good. And if you know anything about musical theatre, there's certain parts in it that you go, oh, I see what they've done there. But also the cameos are insane. If you don't, if you don't clock them, definitely Google it afterwards because you'll go okay. bloody hell. And it's Lin Lin Manuel Miranda who is wicked. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. But musicals, Moana and Les Miserables, any day. Okay. War movies, I'm generally, like you, not a massive fan, but I'd go with Apocalypse Now. Fair enough. For that one, just because of the, like, just the scale is staggering. Um, and, and, and certainly when you know the story behind the making of the film. And oh, sure. Went to, you know, it's like... It's amazing the whole thing. It's amazing they're still not fucking making it, you know. <laughs> um, in terms of musicals, not massively into them, but the ones I like, I really like, and I would go with the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, classic! Um, it, I I know the lyrics to that to a scary degree. Um, so much so that I've I've watched it with people and I've been singing along, and the fucking looks I've got. Of being like, what the fuck is that? It's it's still really good as well. It's, a it's of its film. time. Don't get me wrong. Oh, very much. But, but oh, what it. a film! And I'm going to mention this one only because it's not a film, but it has been filmed, oh, and that's Hamilton. Oh, that you're allowed to say that. Um, I don't know that there will ever be a film of it, but dude, will, it's a recorded I'll, stage show. I think you could call that a film. Yeah. Yeah, but I love it's good. Love it's Hamilton. good. Um, obviously, there's kind of some historical elements that are skimmed over. That's okay. Uh, um, which you know, it's, it gets criticised for. But as a piece of entertainment for for two and a half hours, just brilliant. Would you end-to-end. go and see it on stage after seeing the recorded version of it? <sighs> That's a good question. You know, um, I I did kind of obviously. We're, we're kind of limited in our options at the minute, but I, yeah. I, I did kind of think about that, and I guess once you've seen that recording with the original cast, it's hard to top it. It is, isn't it? And yes. It's like any any anything else is going to suffer by comparison. If it should go on tour, yeah, then I would definitely be interested. Okay, but it's always going to suffer by comparison. Isn't no, that's it? fair. I, I like that. I, I like think. that. Okay, so I think the next bit then is is just if there is one or two franchises that you think maybe work better as a 
the whole franchise together where you can't single out an individual oh, yeah. film. So, Back to the Future, Lord of the Rings. Yep. Um, I've only recently discovered Lord of the Rings, to be fair. I never watched it younger, and I've watched okay. it again now, and phenomenal. Yeah. Um, Indiana Jones, again, great movie making. What a trilogy. What yep. a trilogy. And let's move yeah. on from that one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, really. A lot of other franchises you can single out, like Marvel's too big. To, yeah, to yeah. to say yeah, that's the franchise to watch. Um, maybe the Sam Raimi Spider Man, pretty good. Okay. Even three, I enjoy. Three's all right. Again, yeah. I think it's better than a lot of people give it credit for. What about you? I would agree with. I think most of those. I think Back to the Future is possibly my favorite trilogy. You're in good company because that's exactly how I I say it a lot of the time. It's my favorite I, I... trilogy of all time. I think what I kind of admire most about it is that the first film is a self-contained film. It has, a, and it has an end. As much as there's a bit of a cliffhanger-y kind of thing, it has an end and it was only ever intended as one film, right? But they then managed to make two more films and the result was a coherent trilogy that worked. In comparison to something like Lord of the Rings, where yeah. it was always planned as a trilogy where they knew they would be making three films. With Back to the Future, they didn't, but they still managed to bring it full circle and, and bring it all back and stick the landing. So I thought, brilliant. Yeah, Lord of the Rings, fantastic. What an accomplishment. I remember the first time I saw that in the cinemas, and there's a sequence from the last film where you know the, the, the riders are, are kind of like just bombing down the the fields on the horses you know this epic shot with a with a city off in the distance and i was like this is never going to happen again no studio is going to give a filmmaker it's going to take such a gamble to go off and go right go and make three films give them the money without seeing a single frame of footage mm. and it was like and I don't think it has happened since. Or it did, it did, well, the only time it did happen was with The Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And originally, they did it with two films, and then they decided to make it three partway through filming. But it's that thing of, like, just from a studio point of view, committing... Yeah, to, the, to, to, to that to vision, because, yeah, he, he's, vision, he's from the it. Video Nasties era, isn't he? And yeah, exactly. To make an epic, like, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. that's up there. Just spectacular. I think... Uh, the Bourne films as a whole, um, even the Bourne Legacy, which is like the little offshoot one, um, as part of the overall series, I think it still works. But I think as a series of films, they're great. And uh, Mission Impossible. I prefer the later ones. Yeah, the, la- the later Mission Impossible films, I think, are much better than the originals. And I think that's yeah. maybe because they started to take over with the mental stunts and became more about that. But the story... Did become quite good. Yeah, I I think I think you're right. I think the first two are fine, but I think the third one, where which was J.J. Abrams directed it and Bad Robot took over as a production company, I think that's where they really changed. Mm. Um, and then they kind of had that overarching. Obviously, each one is its own mission, but this overarching kind of backstory going on that kind of then went all the way through to Fallout. Just, I thought, yeah, brilliant. A great series. Can't wait for the next two. Be interesting to see how they top what they've done so oh, far. Oh, yeah. Okay, then. So, moving on to the last sort of two things, which I'll combine. Mm. So, classic films that you've never understood the fuss about and mm-hmm. maybe tie into that because you've never seen them, but you think you should. Okay. <laughs> um, the one I have seen and still don't get the fuss about is Citizen Kane. That would be... I haven't seen it. And because I don't understand the fuss, so I won't see it. Fair enough. I watched it years ago and watched it again recently. And my opinion hasn't really changed. I think on a filmmaking level, I understand and appreciate how advanced it was for its time in terms of camera work, cinematography, some of the effects, special effects that were used, that kind of thing. The kind of the technique behind it. I completely get for its time it it clearly was groundbreaking but it's it's, yeah it's fine it's a good film would I call it the one of the best films ever made no yeah no in terms of classics I've never seen 
I don't know whether there's any I haven't seen, but I, that I feel like I should. Because if I felt like I should, I would do. Fair. Right? But I think in terms of films, the classics I haven't seen. I've never seen Lawrence of Arabia. Yep, same. Uh, the Great Escape. What? <laughs> never seen The Great Escape. How have you Escape? gone through the 80s at Christmas and not seen The Great Escape? I know, right? Lucky me. You lucky bugger. Uh, never seen Gone with the Wind. Never uh, seen Ca- what? Casablanca. What? <laughs> yeah. I've not seen Casablanca, but Gone with the Wind is on my I don't get it list. Okay, just, right, okay. Whatever. And quite <laughs> frankly, my dear, I don't I don't give a damn. Um, I've been waiting for the whole episode to say that. Hey! Uh, Casablanca, yeah, not seen it, not going to bother. Right. Um, Spartacus, nope, not bothered. Okay. Uh, but again, these are the classics that built Hollywood, and yeah, I don't give a shit, mate. Um, I'll tell you another one, which... I, I know a load of people that love it, and to me, I just think it's creepy, and I don't, I don't care. Is uh, Wizard of Oz? Okay, okay, I've Again, seen it. Groundbreaking exactly for what it was. Mean. Yeah, yeah. But nah, yeah. mate, just get in the bin. No, I get that. I get that completely. I think I, you know, you you get these like compilation shows on TV or the kind of the books, you know, or, or websites lists. Yeah. You know, films you have to see. And I look at them and I go, no, I don't really. I don't really. And the the ones on the list that I have seen, I didn't like half of them. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the thing: if you're living the films, uh, you're, you're you're living by a list of films to see before you die. Make your own bloody list, is my opinion. Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. If you think oh, I like the look of that, I should see that. That's a film you're gonna see, you should see before you die because you're making that choice. Exactly. Yeah. You know, there's exactly. there's books, isn't there? There's an actual published book of a thousand and one films before you. Should Seeds before you should die, and that's. I think it must get revised every ten years or so, right? But I'm sure well, there is a thing. So. You'd hope so, yeah. And it's like, yeah, no, no. <laughs> I had a poster given to me with a hundred films off, and you scratch off it, and you get like a poster at the end of it. But it wasn't a films you should. It was just films you should see, and you know, it's got things like Shaun of the Dead, Raiders, mm. and stuff like mm. that on it. But it has introduced me to films that I never thought I would see. So sure, thanks. Yeah, Shawshank Redemption's on there, which I have seen, but yeah. I hadn't seen it for years. Um, Schindler's List is on there, and now those are like classic films that I think you should see. Uh, yeah, have you seen Schindler's List? Oh, a long, long time ago. Uh, okay, okay. It's okay. not a particularly happy film. No, no. But what else is on there? Uh, Leon the Professional, there's a couple of international films, and it's just films I wouldn't think about watching, but again, I'm, I sort of contradict myself. They're not films you should see before you die, but hey, it's a hey. These are films you might like. Yes, yeah. It's more of a recommendation than a um, a statement of watch um, this film instruction. You, you philistine bastard. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I get that. I get that. Um, I I think I, I think yeah. I, I think it's really kind of tricky. There's a fine line, isn't there, between kind of recommending films that people should watch, and and kind of shaming them into it or or making out like they're idiots if they don't watch it or they don't like it sure sure do you, do you know what i mean like like citizen kane right it's fine it's all right i wouldn't say it's the, one of the best films ever made but if if it's someone's favorite film then then fine that that's their call it's up to them and 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 obviously, it, you know, the, yeah, there are these lists, you know, aren't there? Like like IMDb, right? These top ten rated films, and like again, Shawshank Redemption's up there near the top. Well, yeah, I've, I've seen it. It's all right. Not really my thing, but okay. Um, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Well. Well, that all just kind of fizzled out. Uh, yeah, I think we're coming into land, to be fair. That's, I think we are, to be fair. Um, There's no smoking signs come on. So. Uh, it, it, the captain did say we weren't allowed to smoke from the off, so just <laughs> just like, seatbelt signs I think you're looking for. You can tell you haven't been on a plane for a while. Yes, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, okay, I think we've probably covered stuff there. Enough, um, yeah. But they're just opinions at the end of the day, don't forget. You're on the internet, you're going to get opinions you didn't ask for, and that's what we're about. As my... Dear old Gran used to say, opinions are like arseholes. Everybody's got one. And no one wants to listen to anyone else's. Oh, I don't know. People pay a lot of money for that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me listen to your asses. 20 quid. Um, if you've liked it, 
chuck us a chuck us a like and all that jazz. Yeah. You can uh, try and give us some money at Patreon if you really wanted to. You could email yeah. us at pod, uh, podcast at culturetrumpet dot com. Tell us you didn't like us, and we'll put you straight in the bin. Yeah. If if you if you liked it, uh, recommend it to two or three friends. If you didn't like it, recommend it to two or three enemies. <laughs> or and, uh, like it. Recommend it to two or three friends that will then become your enemies because yes. you've suggested this podcast. That's that's the risk. That's the risk you take every time. Um, wh- however, you're listening to this, there there's a share button somewhere on that screen. Just do so it once. Use it. Just do it once. Uh, just do it once, but to lots of people. Yes. And um, we'll be back. Yeah, we'll continue series season two. Now, whether that's a threat or a promise is, oh. is entirely. That's got, be, that, to you. that's got to be now a tagline of the show. It's got to be. <laughs> we'll be back next week. Threat or a promise. You be yes. the judge. No firm plans on, on what we're going to cover in future episodes, but we'll do a few more of these kind of one-off ones where we, we talk about different things in depth. Uh, again, any comments, feedback, suggestions, just let us know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and there we go. And I think that that's it for now. Yeah. I'm, right. Come on. Let's get through go. duty free. Come on. I'm, oh, I'm gagging for a brew, to be honest. <laughs> I think I'll buy a pack of 20, 20 Lambert and Butlers and sell them on the, on the expensive. Let's go, let's go. <laughs>